is pinned. Matt, do you prefer Matt or Matthew? Uh, Matt's fine. Matt, perfect. Sick. Okay, so my name's Nathan, as you can see on the screen, I suppose. <laughs> this is Isaac. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, and hello, hello. I guess before anything else, thank you so much for jumping on with us. Um, mm -hmm. As I said it in Twitter yesterday, like... Uh, I think your project's like super interesting. When we first reached out, I knew it was cool, but digging into it a little bit further, um, it's such a cool use case for NFTs and liquidity pools um, for what you're doing. And so I think it's awesome. Keen to hear more about it. If I can start, I have a question for you. So personal question to start. People want to get to know you, right? So the question is, apparently you were, in, you were at one point in the Glee TV uh, series, right? American TV series Glee. <laughs> What's the context behind that? Yeah, so I spent about 10 years up in Los Angeles um, doing both my studies and being a freelance musician. And so there was a point where I was studying at UCLA um, where they needed a sign line musician. So they hired me to come on in and play trombone in the background uh, during the Saturday Night Fever episode. So you see me in a nice red sweatshirt back there. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's a great claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, well, it's fun. I mean, like, uh, you know, the residual checks every year are quite nice. Um, it's funny. You get a nice, like, $20 check every year. Hey, that's amazing. <laughs> Wow, it's not awesome. bad. I'm yeah. not complaining. No, can't be. Um, so you live right now in um, Haikou, China. Is that right? Uh, I used to live in Haikou, China. Okay. Um, as of last Wednesday, I am now back to the United States. So oh, wow. I'm currently in San Diego. Oh, um, and it's really nice to be back here. I'm enjoying my In-N-Out. I'm enjoying my, uh, my Krispy Kreme <laughs> donuts. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be back. Wait, they don't have Krispy Kreme donuts and In-N-Out in China? <laughs> um, no. They do not. How do yes. survive? <laughs> uh, it's, I, a, it's a hard, hard world. That's true. I heard that they're famous for their coconuts, though. Is that true? They are famous for their coconuts down in Hainan. So it's, uh, you know, Hainan's beautiful, beautiful tropical island in the south of China, kind of in the South China Sea. Uh, it's south of Hong Kong, east of Vietnam. If you look at a map, you'll be able to see it, but no one actually knows where it is. Um, and before COVID, it was starting to open up pretty, pretty nicely. They were implementing a visa-free scheme. Um, you know, the culture was starting to open up a little bit and there was a lot of music and things like that happening. So we were down there running an events company, um, running a, uh, small label and it was a lot of fun until, uh, COVID hit and we got locked out. Uh, we were on tour, uh, at the time we were doing like a little tour of New Zealand and Thailand, a two week vacation to Thailand, uh, for my buddy's birthday turned into a six week, uh, we we're locked out of China. What do we do vacation in Thailand? Uh, but I guess there were... You know, there's there's worse places to be uh, during the beginning of COVID. <laughs> it's always always good to start off. Um, always good to start off a holiday and uh, and have to keep going. Um, got a got a less fun, but moving in more to the product um, side of the question. Uh, so we noticed one of the one of the main features about the product basically is that like about about Unchained is that um, you have. Uh, music royalties, which are obviously a lot of that's going to the label when um, when the label takes like a huge cut of of smaller artists, and um, and they actually end up not seeing a lot of the streaming revenue that they're supposed to be making from, well, mm -hmm. that they that they would be making if they were completely independent. Um, but they need that kind of level of assistance from from the label, you know. So is the lack of uh, revenue that independent artists can make um, from a popular song, is that the biggest issue that Unchained is trying to solve? Well, that's a good question. So what we're doing right now is we're kind of replacing the distribution company. Right now, distributors, not labels necessarily, because labels labels have some value doing uh, doing marketing and doing career advice, things like that. But what we're doing, we're replacing the district kit side of it. So when an artist has their music that's finished, it's on the computer, it's ready to go, we take that music and put it out everywhere it's going to be heard, right? So you're looking at putting it on Spotify, putting it on Apple Music, putting it on TikTok, like that. And what we're able to do that no one else is able to do right now is actually provide a truly free solution for these artists. So rather than paying a subscription, rather than one of these companies taking, you know, 10 to 20% of all the revenue that comes back, we're able to do this for free because we're utilizing um, these NFTs on the back end and utilizing liquidity pools to make money on our side to pay for that tech stack. Gotcha. That's interesting. Okay. So you, you mentioned DistroKid and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I've like, just as a bit of fun, I've personally released a little bit of music and I've experienced that where different models with those traditional uh, DSP distributors are doing like uh, might be an annual subscription, mm -hmm. or I think some of them even take a small percentage of the royalty revenue and stuff like that. I mean, if, if you consider, you know, 20% 
a small percentage of the revenue. Yes. Okay, <laughs> quite large then, I suppose. Um, and so, okay, can I just try and frame exactly, like, I think there's three main elements of what Unchained do for our audience. I think, can I just try and frame it and then you tell me if I get sure. it right or wrong and maybe you can yeah, clarify. Yeah. Okay, so my understanding is Unchained Music, I guess the value they bring is they they actually acquire the artist. I assume that's part of your strategy is finding the artist at the moment. I know it's in beta testing, so people are coming to you and applying. I suppose in the future, there'll be some marketing involved in getting people onto your platform. And then you're providing the platform that the end user can use. So some sort of interface that allows them to upload their music, upload their album art, you know, song titles, all of this kind of stuff. And then you basically take that and then send it out to all the DSPs, mm -hmm. digital service providers. So that's stuff like... Uh, uh, Spotify or Apple Music, stuff like that. So then mm -hmm. the uh, royalties come back. And mm -hmm. so I, you can clarify, I assume that comes back in some, you know, maybe US dollars or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you, this is where the fun starts, right? So then you use or you build on a protocol called Charge Particles. And mm -hmm. so Charge Particles allows you to make one NFT, which relates to the artist. And then within, mm -hmm. and then they use nested technology, which basically means that you can put other assets, other digital assets within that NFT. So in your situation, again, you can clarify, I'm assuming you change your US dollars into USDC or something like that. You put it in an Aave liquidity pool, you pull out A tokens, you nest those in the uh, NFT for a period of time. I'm not sure if there's a lockup period mm -hmm. or something like that. Then the question here, I guess, as well is, um, the lockup period would have to maybe differ depending on the artist and how much uh, the actual capital, the lump sum is for their royalties because you need to make mm -hmm. back a certain amount mm -hmm. in interest. So that might be different mm -hmm. depending on what the actual figure is. And then you, once you've made your interest on that, that's sort of like your source of revenue. You give them 100% of their royalties and they're none the wiser. Is that sort of about right? It's very close. You okay. got it really, really close. So basically when the royalties come back in US dollars, we do convert them to USDC. There's no actual step with us putting it into an Aave pool and then putting the A tokens and charge particles. We actually can put that USDC directly in the artist's NFT that we meant for them. And while it's in there, the charge particles protocol does all that fun stuff for you. So basically it automatically puts it in the Aave pool. It automatically pulls it out when you want to pull it out and it's just USDC. On both ends. Wow. Um, okay. And so that allows us to simplify everything that we're doing. The artist can see all of the royalties on chain. Um, and then beyond that, you're completely right. There is a small lockup period right now. So basically any um, any royalties that come through at the moment, uh, we're experimenting with about a month lockup period. So we can just gain enough uh, interest to actually pay for the tech stack, right? So, you know, tech is still not free, unfortunately. Um, and then in addition, the artist will be holding uh, somewhere around $30 within the protocol over the lifetime. Um, that is their money. And if they want to leave, they can take it out. Uh, but in order to use the protocol, the royalties need to be up to $30. Um, and they keep that in the protocol the entire time they're using it. So you stated in the um, in the white paper um, that you guys have got that there's there's actually like a, a minimum account balance that the artist actually needs to have in that in that amount. Um, does that maintaining that minimum amount um, in all their all the artists NFT accounts um, does that help with like a, a minimum level of operating expenses? Like is that is that kind of how the how the business is run and how like there's a consistent cash flow for. Um, that's exactly it. I mean, there's two sides to what we're doing. This is the first side, which is the music distribution side. Um, and that keeping that $30 lockup gives us enough money to at least break even on the tech stack, <laughs> right? Um, and basically, the interest that we're taking, we're further compounding in, uh, you know, liquidity pools that maybe are a little bit higher risk than like a stable coin liquidity pool. Um, and so that allows us to make further money there at that point. But basically, the amount that they're locking up is, is just enough for us to get by and to run the system. Yeah, right. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so yeah. taking it back to the end user, right? So these are artists, these are creatives, potentially uh, not uh, familiar with NFT technology in the mm -hmm. space that is Web3. So last week we were speaking to a, a lady named Lauren and she runs a restaurant in San Diego, actually. And, oh, awesome. Um, yeah, she's got a restaurant it's called uh, Chow Chow Piadina. Is that right, Isaac? Yep, Chow Chow Piadina. And um, basically, send me the location. I'll have to go later tonight. Okay, done. All right. Well, so it's, <laughs> it's Italian. And um, so basically, she put in this loyalty pl uh, program, which was based on NFTs. So people could sort mm -hmm. of like get NFTs, and after a certain period of uh, sales, then you get stuff just like a normal loyalty program. Mm -hmm. Issue she had was all of the customers didn't know what NFTs were. Right. And so the barrier to entry there was a really big issue, and it, it sort of didn't work. And she was talking about her experience, and it was really good. 
I guess the question for you is how important is the Web3 literacy for people who are interacting with your platform? Well, the great thing about our platform is that you don't have to be literate at all to interact with our platform. You should be able to come from any of these other distributors, distribute all of your music on our platform. It looks exactly like the same uh, as what some of these Web2 platforms. You can come on, put your music up, distribute it. If you want to be custodial and you want to do the true Web3 thing, yes, you can do that 100%. But an artist, for example, that's maybe at the tail end of his career, uh, is a little bit older, um, they've been doing this thing for a while. They're not necessarily going to come in and make sure that they are completely literate about like, okay, well, I need a wallet. What's my seed phrase? How do I send things around? How do I, you know, like there's a, there's a level there um, that people have to get to, to be truly web three. And so what we're trying to do is ease that transition as much as possible. In fact, we just actually launched uh, the Unchained Academy, which is a place where we're putting out resources for people like this. Um, so you can learn as much as you want, but this is a space where you can take that learning in increments. You don't have to jump in feet first and maybe not understand um, what's going on in the space. So we're trying to be that place where artists can onboard, that place where they can start asking questions in a, in a safer environment that someone's like, oh, you don't know how to do this? Well, go read, go do your own research. It's like, like no, we're going we're gonna to help them through that process. Um, and we're going to need a little bit more of that if we're really going to expand um, as, a, you know, as a music NFT platform. So, um, so in the in the platform, one of the one of the things that it was talking about was the data and analytics that are available to the uh, the actual artist. So, when you're when you're making these kind of um, analytics dashboards and and um, interfaces for you know for an artist to to come in and and see, um, how how is it like? Is it is it showing what platforms the users should be making the content for and giving them like an actionable step there? Or is it like, cause what, cause what I imagined was it's, oh, they add, add the money, they add the music to the TikTok platform and, um, that TikTok music backend, um, might be less profitable, but it might lead to more Spotify streams. And then mm -hmm. the artist ends up making more and more short form, mm -hmm. um, music content, which makes one minute songs on Spotify and 30 second songs on TikTok, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes like this, this kind of cycle. Does it, does it kind of go into that, into that depth of which platform is, is kind of leading you to the most um, listens or, or how, how does it kind of all work? Yeah. Okay. So to kind of dig into how the analytics work, it does what you would expect it to do on the surface, right? You can, we're integrated with places like Spotify that it shows you, okay, well, you have this many fans, this song has this many streams from this regions, from these cities. So, you know, you're planning a tour, right? You want to know that uh, you want to go down to Buenos Aires because that's where the majority of your fan base is. We do that, right? And we do that for every platform, including TikTok, including Instagram, in addition to showing you, you know, on those platforms specifically, how many views, how many comments, how many uh, people, you know, have seen it, uh, who is the channel, what is the link to the video, all those things. So it digs in there. Also digs into the fact that, okay, well, where are you actually making the most money? Because each of these places pay at different places. So you might have a million streams on TikTok, and maybe that is not paying you as much as 100,000 streams on Spotify, which is, you know, those, those numbers don't work. But that is something that you would have to take a look at the dashboard and say, okay, well, this is what's happening for me. Maybe I'm getting more exposure over here, but I'm actually making more money from title. So maybe I want to put my focus on title because that's where the money's coming from. The step that we're doing that's beyond all these other places is we're starting to integrate NFT platforms. We're starting to integrate metaverse platforms because these are also DSPs. These are also people places that people consume music. And so I can imagine in the future why are we not putting music into Centraland? Why are we not putting music in the sandbox? Why are we not distributing to places like Audius? Right, and all these things are things that are in the works, right? So we're talking to the various different places to put music on their platforms and then make sure that the artist gets paid on the back end of that, right? Because the artist should be paid for their work and for the use of their creation. Um, and so going beyond this a little bit, it's like, yes, we can distribute to those places. We can show you the streams. We can show you all this in the analytics dashboard. But the next step is making sure that the artist is getting the royalties back. Um, and this is where it gets really interesting. And like, how do we do that? How do we create standards? 
That's an amazing service. I suppose that's something that sets you apart as well. In addition to feeless, there's other feeless platforms as well, but I guess this potentially sets you apart in that regard that you've got your yeah, ear to the ground in regards to additional sources of revenue streams, such as what well, you I would actually, I would actually like to correct you on that. There is, Go there's ahead. no one that's doing what we're doing um, at the moment. Yeah, there are other places like TikTok, for example, just launched their free distribution, but they're taking a massive chunk of royalties on the back end from the artists. There are other places that are launching their free distribution. They're losing money on it, number one. And number two, they only distribute to Spotify and Apple, <laughs> right? And so what we're doing, we're offering the full suite of services, the full 220 plus places that you consume music online for free. No one else can do that because they lose money on it and we don't. Gotcha. Okay, so perception is there's other platforms that are doing it for free, but they're either clipping a bit of the royalties or their service is so restrictive that it's really not worthwhile. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I appreciate the mm -hmm. clarification. Of course. Um, in regards to, uh, you mentioned TikTok and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Question uh, just generally. So you talk about um, distributing to content libraries on something like an Instagram or a TikTok. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when if, you're, if I'm an artist and you're distributing my music to Instagram, it's not being posted on Instagram. You know what I mean? Uh, like right. it's, not, I'm not, it's not showing up on my account as my song being posted. What does that mean when you're po putting it in the content libraries? How does that generate royalty income? Yeah. So places like TikTok, for example, when someone creates a short form video, um, they have this entire library of music that they can use. And then what we do is we place the music in that library. So if someone creates a, a dance video and they want something cool that's coming up, they can look through, they can find your song because that music is now in their content library and this is the same way that instagram does it same way uh facebook does this as well um and there's a bunch of other like short form video platforms out there that do this yeah cool so um so pivoting a little uh you mm -hmm. guys have a what's what's called a, a, a label service um mm -hmm. so that includes creative pr advertising playlist pitching um does that take so like basically you've you've built this whole distribution service and um and you've got like that's that's kind of the main differentiating factor of the um unchained and everything like that and it's got the the NFT side of it and everything. Does it then take another whole staff to run the the whole label side? Like how does how does that work? How many how many staff um do you guys have working for Unchained? And um and yeah, and what's the what's the kind of split between cool tech product and traditional label, um, you know, s side of it? Yeah, great question right now. So the company at the moment is 10 people. Um, we are expanding quite rapidly at the moment. And half of that basically is our label services side. So we're able to take musicians that are a little bit more established in the game, help them develop a web stra uh, web three strategy, help them develop an NFT strategy and take them into this space in a way that is a little bit more uh, handholdish. Um, because, you know, maybe they're, they just don't understand it or they need a little bit more explanation. Um, things like playlisting, things like PR, things like marketing services, we look to actually actually offer these to everyone. This is not just established musicians. This is not just established entities in the space. We're trying to eventually decentralize this as much as possible. So, okay, you are a marketer that has a background in doing this sort of thing. You can create a dope gra graphic design for the cover of an album. Okay, well, let's put you on a decentralized marketplace that is governed all by smart contracts. You can see this person's um, this person's work, you've been rated by other artists on the platform. The artist can come in, put some of our token in escrow, some USDC in escrow and say, I want this. Here's the due date we agree on. Okay, let's shake it. Due date comes. Okay, well, has this done? Yes, yes. It's all released, right? Um, so these are things that we're looking to, looking to implement to also help these artists because you think about it, right? You release your music on these places. There's 60,000 plus songs every day being distributed. How do you get people to listen to your music, right? And this is where the marketing comes in. You have to be playlist pushing. You have to have a release strategy. You have to have dope artwork. These, these are things that are like basic fundamentals to get your music um, out there. And we're helping musicians with that. And we'll have differing layers of this. And some of this is still being flushed out. Um, but this will be offered to both sides um, of that kind of professional, uh, you know, developing musician dichotomy. Amazing. Okay. So I get it. So it's sort of, it's more of a marketplace um, style and, and that makes a lot of sense. 
question there. So I, I, in some of your white paper material, you talk about tokens. And so at one point you talk about a social token and I think a bit later you mm-hmm. talk about a utility token. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them is called noise. Could you just explain if there is what the difference mm-hmm. is between the two um, sure. and how you could see them possibly being used uh, in, in regards to what you're talking about there? Yeah, so noise right now is our social token. There's no financial value. There's no, we're not providing any liquidity for this. There's no use case other than keeping track of who's contributing to our ecosystem at the moment. So, hey, you come on, you're on one of our, our podcasts, just like we're doing now, or you're running a, um, you know, a music theory 101 for our community, or you're doing a, hey, how do you use the compressor in Ableton? Um, type thing within our uh, ecosystem, or you're participating in the various projects or various events that's happening. It's it's a way to keep track of who's contributing right right now. Um, and this is in lieu of our eventual token that will be distributed um, in quarter four as of now. We'll see how the market's doing, so no promises, but that's what we're aiming for right now. Um, quarter four, which actually will have true utility in our system that will be running all these various uh, things that we're talking about at the moment. Okay, so in regards to distribution, obviously we can distribute to DSPs, that's great. You're talking about a bunch of uh, Web3 alternatives there as well, which is really cool. Um, In regards to sync licensing, so this is where Mm -hmm. um, artists can get their music played, um, you know, maybe on ads on the TV or Mm -hmm. stuff like that, commercial use. Um, Is that something that you hope to offer as well how could you see that play out is is there is there a world where you need to build strategic partnerships which also brings Mm -hmm. people to your platform because you can provide them with those yes and so these are things that are currently being worked worked on right now we're having conversations with some of the larger places uh, that do sync licensing to integrate um, those licensing libraries into our platform and also delivering the content that's on our platform to those libraries so I can't talk about the specific people who are involved in this right now because of uh, contracts and NDAs and all that fun stuff. But um, that is something that is actively happening at the moment. And it, we're aiming to have that ready by quarter four. So someone can come in, uh, they can say, this is a cover song of Earth, Wind & Fire of September. Um, you know, now go get the license. Okay, you got the license. Cool, now you can distribute the track. And then hopefully in a way that is really easy to do. Um, I know some of these other platforms, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So we're trying to make it a little bit easier on the end user. Part of this is there's an issue with uh, this needing to go through a centralized database and like a, a, another company to be able to run these just because of how the industry is set up. So we're just trying to get rid of as much of that lag time as possible. We'll see how it goes, but quarter four is the plan. I wanted to talk about uh, what what artists are kind of being attracted to the service. So, how how are there um, like like what are the what are the strategies that you guys are using to bring new artists on? How do they, for example, some some random um, folk band in the middle of the the Midwest might be like, ah, oh, I want free music distribution, so I'm mm-hmm. looking for that, but. How do I know this? Ah, oh, this this whole NFT thing is is like traditionally in the papers. We've seen it's a scam. We've seen mm-hmm. UST has crashed like crazy. How do we know mm-hmm. that that's um you know how do we know this this one that uses um uh B, what what is it B is it BUSD that um you guys are using what's the uh, uh what? USDC USDC sorry um and uh, so USDC yeah how do how do we know that this is uh, this is the stable coin that's um that's not going to crash and everything like that mm-hmm. so yeah basically do you have any that's that's sort of a two part that's a, that's a skeptical part but also how is, how just generally are you guys getting new artists on yeah so uh, to address the latter part of what you're saying first with the the stable coin the reason that we're using USDC specifically is to avoid a UST situation, right? Um, We know through our integration with Circle and through the audits that Circle has done, everything is backed, right? So you can always exchange a USDC coin for $1. Um, And that's because it's always backed by cash or short-term US treasuries. And they have all of their audits on their website. And we know if the entire crypto thing crashes, if the entire market crashes, user funds are safe, right? There's never a point where the user funds are going to be going to zero. Um, which is which is right out front of um, what we're trying to get across to people at the moment. And so to go back to your first part of that question, 
a lot of this comes down to education, right? This is why we're deploying once again in the Unchained Academy. So, okay, well, I've heard about this music NFT thing. Is it a scam? And then explaining why we're doing things the way we're doing in an easy, digestible way to someone that has no background in crypto, right? Why does this music NFT give you the ability, give us the ability to offer you 100% free distribution? How does this work? Okay, well, here's a cartoon video showing you how that happens, right? Same thing with the USDC. At some point, I'm sure we're going to explain that. The reason we use USDC is because of X, Y, and Z, right? Um, just giving them the utility without and with getting rid of some of those um, misconceptions about the space. I mean, there's a, it's really memefied right now. Uh, NFTs are super memefied at the moment. And it's you know not necessarily always in a positive light. So we, we need to make sure that we're continually reaching out. We're continually educating the audience. We're continually being that source of high quality information for music specifically. How can you utilize this in your career? What are the advantages for you to come onto our platform? Um, and then that will hopefully drive actual adoption. Gotcha. I guess the key is there just breaking through the noise, right? To a certain extent and breaking through all the memes <laughs> and providing the, the clear educational information. And so it, it's good to hear that you're doing that. Um, as we wrap, because it's been like half an hour already, which is crazy. Um, I notice, you know, if you go, go down all the way to the bottom of your white um, paper, you talk about a thought that is maybe providing this as a white labeling service. Mm -hmm. um, my head was, oh, are you implying that there might be other use cases for what you're doing, the model that you're taking, which is kind of sort of using NFT technology and mm -hmm. making it palatable for people who don't understand how it works? What's the thought behind the white labeling? Is there a use case that comes to mind or just a bit yeah. of an explanation on that? Yeah, absolutely. So imagine you're a small independent label and you're having to pay one of the majors for distribution. You're pay having to pay 10 to 15% of the royalties that are coming through. And now all the artists that are signed to your label can distribute through you in your own branded environment, right? We're immediately improving labels bottom line. We're immediately proving other small distributors bottom lines, right? Because we're offering a free distribution service, right? So they can take it, they can put it in their brand environment and they can say, okay, yeah, we're still doing distribution and we're more than happy to let them white label our service because we still are able to make revenue on this. So we can end up powering all of this distribution that's out there. I mean, distribution is like just under a $2 billion industry specifically. Um, and it's not including marketing. It's not including all the other things that surround distribution, right? Specifically music distribution is about just under 2 billion. And so if we can capture even a fraction of that, right? Like we're doing okay. Um, and this is a way we can do it by targeting any kind of the small and mid-sized labels that are having to cut extractive deals um, with larger distributors. Well, um, that was I've, I found that um, really insightful about what uh, what kind of Unchained is about and what um, what the music industry is is all about. I think we're I think we're pretty much wrapping up here. But um, if you had to I say, like, what what are the areas that you want like people to people to go and find out more about um, if they're if they're looking into NFTs and and they they need to have like a very basic understanding. And also, how can people find out more about Unchain and how can um, and and find out more about you as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the favorite places that we have online um, for learning about this, places like Water and Music is really really great. Um, obviously, the Unchained Academy, we're we're trying to be the space as well. Um, there's some really great influencers on Twitter that do education. Uh, Cooper is one of them. Cooper Turley. Um, as far as where you can find us, you can find us at unchainedmusic.io, not .com, .io. Um, and you also can find us on Twitter at Unchained Distro. Uh, so you're more than welcome to reach out, come say hi, uh, and hopefully we'll have you on the platform soon enough. Thank you so much, Matt. That's, um, that's amazing. That's amazing. I was like, he'll have to release an album so that we can try his platform. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've, been really, I've been really into SoundCloud raps lately. So, you know, I'll drop some, <laughs> I'll drop some heat on your... Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Done. Amazing. All right. So if, if artists want to get involved, they can just apply at the moment as well. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so just go to unchainedmusic.io and click apply to beta mm -hmm. and you'll be on our list. We'll amazing. add you to beta as soon as we can. So sick. Matt, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me, guys.